From Washington, I'm Christopher Cruz. President Obama urged Republicans in the House of Representatives Friday to compromise on a tax and spending plan. Such a deal would avoid a year-end crisis that would increase taxes, cut spending, and possibly send the country into a new recession. The president asked Republicans to use their Christmas vacation to think about the hardships Americans will face if a deal is not reached in the next ten days. Without an agreement, almost $500 billion in spending cuts and tax increases will take effect January 1st. Almost all Americans will be affected by them. The largest gun rights groups in the United States says there should be armed police officers in every school in the country. The head of the National Rifle Association said Friday that tragedies like the shooting in Newtown, Connecticut one week ago could be prevented by armed security. Wayne LaPierre said the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. He blamed movies and video games for exposing American children to a violent culture. Two protesters attended the NRA news conference and blamed the group for gun violence. One protester held up a sign to the cameras that said, NRA, killing our kids. Officials in the eastern American state of Pennsylvania say a series of shootings has left four people dead and three state troopers wounded. They say the shootings happened over several kilometers in Frankstown Township, about 150 kilometers from the capital of the state, Harrisburg. They say the gunman was among the dead, and they say the emergency is over. The gunman shot and killed two men and one woman during a fight. The shooting happened one week after a man in Newtown, Connecticut, killed twenty children and six adults before killing himself. South Sudan's army has shot down a United Nations helicopter, killing all four Russian crew members. A South Sudan military spokesman said troops mistook the helicopter for an aircraft supplying weapons to rebels. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon condemned the attack. He said the UN helicopter was clearly marked. He called on the government of South Sudan to immediately investigate the incident. The UN says the flight was on an observer operation when it went down Friday in the eastern state of Jongle. An early report said the helicopter had simply crashed. You are listening to the news in VOA Special English from Washington. Police fired tear gas at protesters in the city of Alexandria in northern Egypt on Friday. Anti-Constitution protesters and conservative Islamists were throwing rocks at each other before riot police stopped them. At least 20 people were hurt. The incident happened the day before a second day of voting on a disputed constitutional referendum. Conservative Islamists had called for mass demonstrations before Saturday's second round of voting on the proposed constitution. 
The measure has the support of President Mohamed Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood Party and of Salafist groups. But members of the liberal, non-religious, and Christian opposition fear it will weaken civil liberties because the proposed new constitution increases the role of Islamic law and does not guarantee women's rights. The rights group Amnesty International says Kenya's decision to remove all refugees and asylum seekers in the country to two rural camps is a violation of international law. On Friday, the group said the Kenyan government's order is, in its words, a discriminatory and unlawful restriction on freedom of movement. Amnesty's East Africa expert said such a restriction will probably lead to other serious human rights abuses in already overcrowded, poorly protected refugee camps. The order would place thousands of Somali refugees in the huge Dadaab refugee camp in northeastern Kenya. Refugees from other countries would be sent to Kakuma, a camp near the border with South Sudan. North Korea says it has arrested an American citizen for crimes against the state after he entered the communist country as a vacation traveler. The man is identified as Bae Jun Ho. The official Korean Central News Agency said Friday that Mr. Bay has admitted to crimes that were not described, but the news agency said they were proven through evidence. The news agency suggested Mr. Bay will face a trial. Under North Korean law, the punishment for actions against the state is five to ten years of hard labor. VOA's Korean service has learned that Mr. Bay was a travel guide operating his own company. Sources told VOA that he was held because he had pictures of hungry North Korean children asking for food. The sources said Mr. Bay had made the pictures during his travels. <laughs>